The rookies of this past year's NBA draft are demonstrating why this was one of the most confusing drafts in recent memory. The number one pick is out for two months. Nobody has been talking about the number two pick or number three pick whatsoever. And the best rookie is the guy that went undrafted and is now averaging like 23 points a game for the Miami Heat. Either way. This draft this past year was one that is confusing to me now. And there's only one thing to do when the draft of a previous year confuses you. And that's to move on way too early to do an NBA draft for 2020. So, a mere 238 days away, here is my 2020 NBA mock draft. Now to clarify, the order for this top 10 is based off of 538's standings predictions for the end of this year so without further ado let's get into it with the number one overall pick the new york knicks select cole anthony from north carolina there are honestly four players that could go for the number one pick including anthony james wiseman anthony edwards and Lamelo ball but for the knicks i see them taking the sure thing and that's cole anthony he's a dynamic guard he's extremely athletic he's very smooth in the lane very similar to last year's unc point guard kobe white he's got great upside he's a real leader you saw that for oak hill even though oak hill didn't do very well last season we saw how cole anthony could lead a high capacity team and going into unc with the way they run their offense he's going to be able to get a lot of shots and he's going to have the ball in his hands a lot. For the Knicks, this is honestly their time to either put up or shut up regarding Dennis Smith Jr. He, they got them in the Porzingis trade with the Mavericks. And this pick will really determine if they want to stay with Dennis Smith Jr. long term. Dennis Smith has shown some pretty good flashes in the NBA. But he's going to be coming into his... I believe his third or fourth year. So at the end of his team option for his rookie deal. So this season is really going to determine what his future in the NBA is. But if Dennis Smith Jr. does not pan out, I see the Knicks going with Cole Anthony as his replacement. Uh, I've seen some comps compared to Derrick Rose and Kemba Walker. I, def I somewhat disagree with that. I don't think he's as purely athletic as Derrick Rose or Kemba Walker, but I think he's got more of that shiftiness of Kemba Walker, less like Derrick Rose. I see Cole Anthony as a guy who attacks the lane with his uh, uh, sort of craftiness, his ability to absorb contact, his ability to use his strength. Uh, his shooting is not the best. That's one thing that he has to work on, but I anticipate at UNC with uh, Coach Roy Williams, that he'll have no problem uh, improving his shooting this season at UNC. With the number two pick in the 2020 NBA Draft, the Memphis Grizzlies select James Wiseman. James Wiseman, in most people's opinion, would be the number one pick in this draft. But in this situation, the Knicks have the number one pick, and they have a good center in Mitchell Robinson that they want to see how far he can develop. So that means the Grizzlies, who in this standings would fall with the number two pick, end up getting James Wiseman. The Grizzlies have a really good young core, which was surprising when I looked at 538's predictions for them being the second worst team in the NBA. They have John Morant. They have Dylan Brooks, who's shown flashes this season of really improving. And they also have Jaron Jackson. So the positions that they need are small forward, which this draft is not high on, or a center to put alongside Jaron Jackson Jr. And James Wiseman fits that role of the big man perfectly. The athleticism of James Wiseman is absolutely unbelievable. He's seven foot. He's very thin, so he can uh, put on some weight if he needs to. He's extremely athletic. He's a monster in the paint. He's a monster on the boards. He's a shot blocker. He's got length. And he's also got a decent jump shot and has shown the ability to sort of stretch it out from three. And uh, if he develops it, be a pretty good pick and pop opportunity with him and John Morant 
or John Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr. He's a shot blocker. He's got okay perimeter defense. That needs to be improved. He also uh, seemed to be a bit erratic at times, uh, taking bad shots or trying to finish in traffic when he, he almost can't bully people with his strength. That's another thing he needs to work on is his strength, but the physical gifts that James Wiseman has are absolutely unbelievable. Uh, and learning with Penny Hardaway this season at Memphis is going to be huge for him. The comparison that I've seen a lot is Anthony Davis. And this is very, com it's conflicting because Anthony Davis has a lot of the same attributes that James Wiseman has. They both share that ability to block shots. They both are very long, very athletic for their size. But where I'm not sure is about the way that they score. Anthony Davis has really gotten away from the post uh, in recent years. He's gotten to a, a really good mid-range jump shooter. He's gotten the three. And I think that's where James Wiseman and Anthony Davis split apart a little bit. I think James Wiseman is much more an inside scorer, uh, even more than Anthony Davis. And who knows, as I said, he could develop a better three-point jump shot. Who knows? But for right now, uh, I see flashes of uh, slight Rudy Gobert on the defensive end with his length. Um, okay at guarding the perimeter like Gobert, but could improve. And on offense, I see flashes of Anthony Davis. But I also see the inside game of someone like Julius Randle, who uh, is left-hand dominant and uses the hook shot a lot. Uh, uses his size and strength, Julius Randle does, to get inside for layups. And I could see Wiseman doing that with his length as well. But I'm not really sure for a true comparison to James Wiseman. But either way, the number two pick, the Grizzlies, will not be sad whatsoever. With the number three pick in the 2020 NBA Draft, the Cleveland Cavaliers select Anthony Edwards out of Georgia. The Cavs are looking for overall talent. They are looking for something that can bring life to the franchise. They're looking for someone to pair with Garland and Colin Sexton. And the next best option after James Wiseman for this role would be Anthony Edwards. He's pretty much a photocopy, in my opinion, of Victor Oladipo. And that's the comp that most people are putting out for him. He is a very, very similar player. He's very athletic. He can guard the perimeter and can really be a, a great shot blocker with his athleticism. But again, the outside shooting is a little bit to be desired. And that was the same with Victor Oladipo when he was coming out of Indiana. They are big athletes. They can run the floor. They can guard the perimeter. Uh, they need to work on their shooting a bit. That's really a perfect comparison for Anthony Edwards. Now, looking at the fit for the Cavaliers, uh, this is a bit tricky for them. If they end up uh, as if this is going to be the order, but going off of this order in the third spot, Cole Anthony and James Wiseman are already off the board. James Wiseman would be the initial pick of the Cavaliers since they already have multiple guards in Colin Sexton and Darius Garland. But with those two gone, Anthony Edwards could almost slide to a small ball three, almost as if Andrew Wiggins was there, but Wiggins is not as big overall as Anthony Edwards. Edwards is a bit shorter, but he's bigger and he's stronger, which I believe makes him a good fit for the small ball three. You could play Garland, Sexton, and Edwards as a small ball lineup with uh, some of their other players like Kevin Love maybe being the small ball five. And I could see that really working in that system they have in Cleveland with uh, John Beeline being the new coach there. Uh, so Anthony Edwards, overall, solid prospect. I think he's one of the most sure players in this draft. Uh, some players that we'll get into earlier I see as boomer bust. But I think Anthony Edwards is one of the safest picks and one of the best picks in this year's draft. With the fourth pick in the NBA draft, the Charlotte Hornets, Select the one you've been waiting for, LaMelo Ball. The Hornets are in complete tank mode. And in this unfortunate scenario, they do not get one of the top three picks. But that really doesn't matter in this draft. This draft is a top four draft, not a top three or top two like it was last year. 
LaMelo Ball can easily be the number one pick. But in this scenario, I have him going to the Hornets and being the point guard of the future for the Charlotte Hornets. Terry Rozier was great. There's no reason for playing him over LaMelo Ball in any circumstance anywhere. Uh, LaMelo has really changed his game, and I got to give him a ton of credit for it. Uh, back at Chino Hills, his first two years, he was a spot-up shooter. He would have the ball in his hands a little bit, but he was an off-ball player most of the time with Lonzo. Then he became the overall number one star on that Chino Hills team uh, after Eli Scott left, and he became a dominant scorer and a dominant ball handler. Didn't play any defense, though. At Spire, he really transformed into a better overall player. Uh, he got off the ball more with Rocket Watts there. He became a better jump shooter. Um, and then he's going to be going, or he already is, with the Illawarra Hawks in the NBL in Australia. And now he has really become an overall, all-around good player. Uh, the shooting and the ball handling and the passing are a given. He is fluid. He flows unbelievably well. He's a great shooter. Uh, shot selection is mediocre at best. It has gotten better this season. But the big thing is his athleticism. He's 6'7 now easily. Could be 6'8, 6'9 depending. He's barely 18 years old. He's going to be the youngest player in the first round probably. And his athleticism has ballooned unlike anything I've really seen from a high school player recently. Look at his tape from his sophomore year and junior year at Chino Hills. And then look at his uh, senior year at Spire to now in the NBL. The size, uh, the athleticism, it's off the charts. The biggest thing is his defense. Obviously, he's never had to play the role of a lockdown defender. At Chino Hills, he had other people he could rely on. At the, with Spire, they didn't play defense. They just played a full-court press that they just outscored everybody. With the Hawks, we've seen him have some moments, such as R.J. Hampton swatting his shot or uh, him just not playing great overall perimeter defense that he's going to have to improve upon. Or he could just be another pure shooter, pure ball handler. Um, a little bit like Lonzo in that sense. But the Hornets... This is a home run pick for them. They could really pick any of the top four and be happy to build their team around them for the foreseeable future. But uh, LaMelo Ball, I could easily see as being the best player in this class, him or James Wiseman. The upside is there, potential is there, and now all the Hornets have to do is tank and go get him. With the fifth pick, the Atlanta Hawks select Isaiah Stewart from Washington. I saw Isaiah Stewart play in high school with La Lumiere, and the man is a physical beast. He's powerful, he's explosive, he is a overall tank inside. It's absolutely unbelievable. Uh, but I have him going fifth here. Uh, the top four are really what you're looking for in this draft, but the Hawks, they have John Collins, they have Herter, they have Wings in DeAndre Hunter and Cam Reddish. And they have their point guard of the future in Trey Young. So all they need now is someone to shore up the front court with John Collins. And what do you know, Isaiah Stewart ends up in their lap. He's extremely strong. He's an unbelievable athlete. And he is a really good shot blocker. Beat, he's only 6'9 in height, but he has a 7'4 wingspan. So he's extremely lanky. He's a very good athlete, and he is a fantastic rebounder. All of those things are exactly what Atlanta needs in a big man right now. They don't need another score. They need someone who's going to get in the paint, do the dirty work, rebound, defend, but can also jump with John Collins and be an athlete on offense. Uh, as I said, he isn't a great shooter. He's not a great offensive player. He really uses his strength and size to his advantage, which is all the better for him and uh, some comparisons I've seen are Derek Favors and Zach Randolph I see Isaiah Stewart as more of an athlete than those two I see him as the uh, grinded out guy that Zach Randolph was but I see a lot more athleticism in him than a lot of these comparisons do he's a perfect fit for the Hawks 
if they're able to even get close to the fifth pick in the real draft, I anticipate them going after Isaiah Stewart. With the sixth pick, the Washington Wizards select, and please forgive me, Denny Avdija. Denny Avdija from Israel. Uh, Our first European player in the draft so far. Uh, He's sort of a mystery. Nobody's really heard of him. Um, They're saying that he is Luka Doncic 2.0. And just looking off some of the video that I found of him, uh, his statistics, he's a little lighter than Doncic, but a lot of similarities appear between their games. Their scores, first and foremost. Their shooters, uh, they're very crafty. They're not extremely athletic, but they are smart. And that's the big thing with a lot of European players we've seen in the past couple of years, specifically Porzingis, uh, Doncic, and now Denny. They, they all understand how to play the game. They come in, they're somewhat polished. They play it against really good competition. They played in FIBA. They played in all these tournaments that prepare them for the NBA. And the Wizards, uh, they have Hachimura. They have John Wall and Bradley Beal. So I didn't see them... Uh, going after a guard in this position, being that the Wizards are a horrible team and their GM is horrible. So uh, I don't expect them to trade any of the players they have on their roster right now, at least. Uh, But then he could play that small forward that they're looking for. They could have John Wall, Bradley Beal at the one and the two. They could have uh, Thomas Bryant and Hachimura playing the five and the four. And then Denny uh, Avdija could play the three as that sort of spot-up shooter, that secondary ball handler, uh, that sort of glue guy connecting the front court with his ability to score down low and his uh, ball handling skills to be a guard. Um, I'm going to have to do some more research on him. Honestly, I did this pick purely off of need and what was available at the this spot in the draft at this point there's a severe drop off in talent so uh, we're gonna have to see how this shakes up in the end but uh denny uh Deja could be a, a, a mini Doncic, not luka Doncic, but a mini Doncic for the wizards at number six with the number seven pick in the nba draft the sacramento Kings select jeremiah robinson earl from villanova I saw Jeremiah Robinson Earl play along with Josh Green at IMG last year, and he was really uh, off and on. You would notice him for like a 10-minute stretch where he would completely dominate, and then he would sort of drop back for a little bit. And maybe that was just because of all the talent on IMG. Uh, But I still think Jeremiah Robinson Earl is worthy of a top eight pick in this year's draft. The Sacramento Kings... Uh, they're always looking for wing talent. I don't see Harrison Barnes as a long-term option for them. So I see Jeremiah Robinson Earl being able to play that ball handling forward that they need. He's 6'9", 235 pounds. So uh, he's a, a solid size for a small forward. Actually a little bit bigger than most small forwards today. But it's very interesting with Jeremiah Robinson Earl. He's a ball handler first and foremost. He can handle the ball. He's a good facilitator. He's a decent shooter, and he's he's skilled. That's the big thing with him. He's a solid overall player. He's skilled. He can play defense. He can handle the ball well. He's an all-around player that you can plug in pretty much immediately, which is what the Kings would be looking for with De'Aaron Fox, Buddy Heald, and Marvin Bagley the third. Uh, he could fill that small forward role. If they need to, they could honestly move him up to power forward and play Marvin Bagley at center if they want to go small, or they can move him down to small forward with their center and Marvin Bagley playing the four if they want to go bigger. So either way, uh, I see Jeremiah Robinson Earl as a guy that's going to go under the radar this year. Villanova, after their national championship a couple years ago, has really dropped off the radar of most NCAA experts. They're not really that high ranked, if I am correct. But uh, either way, I see Jeremiah Robinson Earl uh, putting up some decent numbers in college, some solid numbers. But I think once he gets into the NBA with Sacramento, he could really turn into a very, very quality player. With the number eight pick, the San Antonio Spurs select Trenton Watford from LSU. Another player that nobody is really paying attention to. He's a small forward for LSU, 6'8", 220. And uh, just like uh, Jeremiah Robinson Earl and Anthony Edwards even before him, 
This guy is an athlete. He's a scorer and he's an athlete. He's 6'8", but got a seven, nearly 7'2 seven wingspan. And he's a completely athletic player. He, he can really score in transition. He's quick. He can get to the rim. And he's also, like Anthony Edwards, a solid perimeter defender. He's got good length. He's got good hands. He can stay in front of, front of plays, uh, but can still really finish in traffic. And just like with Anthony Edwards, the big question is the outside shooting. He's not a really good three-point shooter or mid-range shooter, to be honest with you. He's really a guy that finishes in the lane. He's a pure slasher at this point in his career. Uh, But the athleticism, the potential is there, and the ball handling as well, to where uh, he could play the small forward and bring up the ball in Greg Popovich's system, if he's even there at that point. Uh, but Trenton Wofford, look out for him. LSU was very, very good last year, and a lot of people didn't pay attention. They had like Nas Reed, Tremont Waters, a lot of great players on that team. Uh, so LSU, watch out for them. Another powerhouse in college basketball. Uh, but I can't wait until I see Trenton Wofford in the NBA. I, I see him as a player that could really surprise a lot of people. And going to a team like the Spurs would only make him a, a better player than he already is. With the ninth pick in the 2020 NBA draft, the Chicago Bulls select Jalen Smith from Maryland. This is one of my players that I'm moving up in my mock draft, uh, just based off of what is available right now. So the Bulls have a solid overall roster. They have Kobe White at the point guard, Zach Levine at shooting guard, Otto Porter, and Laurie Markin, along with Wendell Carter Jr. So they really don't have any major needs in the starting lineup. They have a lot of young players that are very good. And I think that Jalen Smith could be a positive six man or even compete uh, with Wendell Carter Jr. and get a lot of minutes as one of the big men in the Bulls system. Uh, Not really that big on name recognition, obviously. Going at Maryland, not really the biggest basketball school, but he's an all around very good power forward slash center. He's six foot 10. 215, so he's athletic enough to stand with power forwards and some small forwards, uh, but he's tall enough to be a big man in today's NBA. Uh, He's got a decent mid-range jump shot. He has shown three-point range, so that's very important. He's also uh, very athletic. Uh, It sort of sneaks up on you like that. He's sort of lanky. He's tall, but uh, he's very athletic in the open court. Uh, He's a smart player, which is very important for a guy uh, going into the later end of the lottery. You're looking for players uh, that are either complete projects or players that you can almost plug in right away. And I see Jalen Smith as a guy that the Bulls can plug in right away. The only thing, and the only thing that I really have a problem with, is that he is going to get bullied. I mean, even players like Wendell Carter Jr., Jaron Jackson... They are much bigger, and they seem to be a little bit stronger than Jalen Smith. He seems very wiry, very lanky, and he's going to need to put on some weight and to bulk up overall if he's going to survive in the NBA for long. But the Bulls are looking for overall talent here. They're looking for someone to back up Laurie Markkinen since he did have injury last year. So I see Jalen Smith creeping his way up into the top 10. With the 10th pick in the NBA draft, The Phoenix Suns select R.J. Hampton. I have R.J. Hampton sliding a little bit. I think with the presence of LaMelo Ball in Australia, R.J. Hampton is still going to get some shine, but I think that teams are going to be a little skittish on him, uh, not seeing him overall against that great a talent. Uh, But I still think he's a top five talent. I just happen to have him sliding a bit in this year's draft. R.J. Hampton for the Suns. First of all, the Suns, uh, they have a decent team this year. They're much better than they were last year with a couple additions being Ricky Rubio, Kelly Oubre Jr., and Frank Kaminsky. Uh, But they still need a point guard of the future. Ricky Rubio is not going to be that point guard. And I see if R.J. Hampton is available for the Suns, they need to take him. He is an absolute athlete at the point guard position. He's 6'5", extremely athletic. He's smooth. He is a very good three-point shooter and a very good ball handler. He can run the point with Devin Booker. Um, But the thing is with 
RJ Hampton is that uh, he is not that great at finishing in the lane. And uh, he really needs to work on his ability to rebound and uh, provide some defense uh, when his play, when his uh, the person he's guarding is off the ball. He's really not a great finisher inside, even though he is very athletic. I can honestly see R.J. Hampton sliding up into the top five. There's no reason why he couldn't. Uh, but right now, at the number ten pick, R.J. Hampton will be an unbelievable steal. So guys, that was my way too early 2020 NBA mock draft. Uh, please tell me how wrong I am in the comments. I always await your lovely comments telling me uh, that I'm an idiot for having R.J. Hampton outside the top five, which I may be, or having someone like Jalen Smith all the way in the top ten. But let me know what you guys think. I am back to uploading. I will be uploading as much as I can, so be sure to stay subscribed and stay tuned for more videos. And until next time...